everyone, this is Alpha. Welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone tutorial. Um, today is less of a tutorial, more of a uh, an invention. Uh, but first, some changes. Uh, as you may have noticed, I have a brand new microphone. Uh, no more staticky, feedbacky, crappy headset. Uh, much better audio quality. I'm really happy with it. And I also have a brand new skin. I've been getting into uh, PvP and that sort of thing online. Uh, I never had a skin before, actually. So I've created my first one. And uh, pretty happy with that as well. So, uh, but let's just dive right into this. Um, so I'm on this this flat platform here. Um, as you can see, there are no pressure plates, uh, no uh, levers, no uh, trip wires, nothing. There's nothing that could be used to activate anything. Uh, there aren't even any walls where a uh, a mine cart could be hidden, where we could kind of push it on a uh, a rail to an activator. Um, no, nope. it's just purely flat. Um, but this could very well be the entrance to a secret lair or a, a hidden staircase or anything like that. Um, so we're going to come right to the middle here, uh, t -t 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 somewhere around here. And uh, let's, let's get our inventory up. Let's throw a spider eye here. Access denied, because who wants a spider eye? It's useless. Um, let's try something uh, a little richer, a diamond block. There we go, access granted. And uh, we're using command blocks here, which you can't spawn in in, um, in regular survival um, without cheating. But uh, it can easily be hooked up to just about anything. Uh, you could even hook up multiple outputs for um, access denied or access granted. So it's pretty cool. Uh, let me just show you how it works. Now this is exactly the same as the setup over there. Uh, I've just taken off some of the half slabs except for the, the four in the center here. Um, as you can see, there are a few hoppers and a few droppers, and then a, a whole bunch of comparators and other wires. Um, so let me just come over here and I'll show you kind of the principle of how this is working. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about the placement of these or anything, but oh, there we go. Uh, the main thing is that you have a, a top hopper here. And this is going to be the input hopper, so uh, this would have a half slab over it. And if you weren't already aware, um, if you put a uh, an item on top of a half slab, ooh, on top of a half slab, it still gets sucked into the hopper. Um, but yeah, that'll be our input. And there are two possible outputs. It can go either direction. Uh, if this hopper is locked, um, actually, let me let me go back a little bit further. Uh, a hopper underneath another hopper, even if it's pointing a different direction, will still suck the items out of it. Uh, I think I've explained that before, but if I haven't, there you go. Um, so if this hopper, though, the bottom one that is sucking the items out, is locked, um, let's just do that. If you put an item in here, it's no longer going to go to this bottom one. It's actually going to go over to the right one, because that's where it's pointing. It has another direction that it can go. Um, if we lock both this one and this one, it's still going to go to this right hopper because it's the this top hopper which is actually controlling where it's going at that point. Uh, the bottom one takes precedence if it's unlocked because it'll suck it out faster than this one can output it to here. Um, but because this one's locked, it'll output to here. So that's uh, a very important principle of how this works. Um, in the actual system, this right hopper is our filter. So this inventory is entirely filled up. Let me just go show you that. So we come down here, uh, you can see it's entirely filled up with diamond blocks. And the reason we have 18 and then the extra four is so that we're filling up the inventory just enough that it triggers um, the maximum uh, single length strength of redstone wire. I'm not exactly sure what to call that signal. Yeah, the the very maximum of the one length signal for a redstone wire. Uh, and what that means is that if we have another diamond block in here, um, I can just do that, yoink, um, it immediately gets popped out because this redstone wire suddenly has enough strength to go to here and to here, which are both off right now. Um, so as soon as a diamond block gets in there, it will turn on that repeater and that repeater and it'll turn off that torch, and basically everything just happens at once because of that. Um, 
Now this this one on the right is the input. Uh, so the the one below it is locked, as you can see by default. And so any items that come in here, they will try and go into this hopper on the right first. Now only diamonds are going to get through, and if they're not, they get stuck here. But that's okay because we have a comparator here. So as soon as an item that isn't valid gets in here, you can see it activates the comparator, which has a um, which turns off this torch, which then um, sets this this other system in motion. And this is uh, I guess I call it our purging system. Uh, basically, if items in here do not match the items in here, they will get sucked out and spit back to the user. Uh, so the the torch here gets turned off, which turns off this uh, redstone wire, which turns on this redstone torch, which turns on this repeater, which goes to this block, which turns off the uh, the redstone torch here, which then lets this hopper suck out an item here. So if this item was quartz or a spider eye, it would uh, then be sucked out. Uh, now as soon as it comes down to this hopper, it activates this comparator, which uh, goes along this line back into this uh, this block here and deactivating it again. So it kind of creates a, a clock until it's empty. Uh, and it also, um, can see it it's pointing into this dropper so as soon as the item comes down here it activates this which kind of keeps going in a loop until it's empty um, and the items are going into this dropper now when the dropper receives an item it's doing basically the same thing uh, it's activating a, a comparator which goes in a loop and activates itself uh, with a strong redstone signal which also activates the dropper above it which means items that are put in here uh, get spit out directly to the top as you can see. Um, now along the way there's also this access denied output and this can be anything, this doesn't need to be a command block um, that can be taken anywhere, that could be taken to something to shoot arrows at the intruder. Um, now coming back over here, uh, if the, the diamond made it through to here, um, the, uh, the hopper becomes unlocked because the signal goes through this comparator around here, deactivating this torch, deactivating this wire, which unlocks the hopper and sends it into, um, if you can see it's pointing into this dropper. Once it gets into this dropper, it goes through this comparator around here to this block and activates the dropper again. So um, as soon as an item gets through here, it gets shot up again. But at the same time, this uh, signal comes over here to the, the access granted uh, output, which again can also be anything. It could be a door, a staircase, uh, you know, pistons, anything. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, it. It's probably more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, if you know that, you know, there's only gonna be you using it, you don't really need all this, this extra stuff. What this does is it actually keeps the system from clogging. Um, you can throw any amount of items into this and it will never clog and the reason is because it will continuously check for items in uh, these hoppers and make sure they're always being spit out uh, without clogging in the droppers or in the hoppers and the same thing for the other side um, occasionally like if you threw in a, a stack of diamond blocks you get some weird behavior uh, it would say access granted once and then it would say access denied a bunch of times and then it might go back to access granted but that's fine because you're not you're not supposed to be doing that the main important thing is that um, if you're throwing a single item in it works um, if you throw in a stack of incorrect items <laughs> it'll also work so if someone accidentally drops a stack of items they'll they'll all pop back up and if you accidentally throw a stack of diamond blocks they'll all come back um, that's the main thing is that nothing gets lost in the system so there's no maintenance needed you don't have to come down here and fetch items from hoppers and droppers, that sort of thing. Um, let me just demonstrate that uh, so you can kind of see. Let's get a, I don't want a, a full stack, it'll take a while. Uh, come on, get out of here. No. Okay, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there we go, good enough. Uh, so if we drop all these in, 
you can see one by one they'll pop out of here. They won't get clogged or anything. And uh, if we get uh, some diamond blocks too. These take a little bit longer, I believe. Oh, I missed. Uh, there we go. You can see it's a, it's a little bit strange behavior, but none of the items will get lost. If we check in here now, nothing in the dropper, nothing in that dropper, nothing in that hopper, nothing in that hopper, nothing in that dropper, and still the same filters before. So it works flawlessly. Um, I think it's pretty cool. It's obviously not practical for uh, actual security, but I think it uh, can add something fun to a base if you're trying to hide something. Uh, let me know if you found this useful or if you're going to use this in a base. I'd love to see uh, some usages of this in real life. And uh, if you found this helpful or enjoyable, leave a comment uh, or a like. And if you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, uh, definitely subscribe. There will be more to come for sure. I've got tons of things planned. Uh, I'm going to be making a PvP map shortly, I hope. So uh, that's it for now. Um, I'm out for today. And... Goodbye.